The Texas school shooting is, of course, an incredibly difficult topic for adults and especially children. So we're joined now by Dr. Chase Samsel, a child psychiatrist at Boston Children's Hospital. Doctor, thanks so much for taking the time to speak with me. How should parents even begin to discuss this kind of tragedy with younger children? Yeah, thanks for having me. That's such an important question, and I think one that every single family is struggling with right now who has young children and maybe older too. I think the first thing to do is to know that we got to address it. Even very young children hear about things that are going on, you know, whether it's in school, whether it's from siblings, family members, or maybe just overhearing the news from the other room. And for young children especially, the most important thing, uh, just thinking developmentally about young children, is knowing this is not happening to them right now. And, this, and whether or not, especially here in the Commonwealth, this is something far away, luckily and fortunately for us, because that's where young kids go. I just heard about something that happened at an elementary school. Does that mean it's happening at my elementary school? Mm. It's really important for us not to be dishonest with our children, but we need to reassure them about what's happening now and what's not happening now. This is not happening to you. This is not happening near us right now, and it's over. Right. And of course, that makes so much sense to the adult mind to talk to uh, small children that way. I have four grown children now, but I envision talking to myself as I did about 9-11, for instance, right? And that was a very far away, tragic event involving New York City, the adult world. Uh, I think the difficulty with this, with small children, is that these were fourth graders. It is an environment they can envision being in their classroom. What if they've heard about this and they start to begin to tell their parents they are afraid to go to school? Absolutely. Well, I think, first of all, validating those emotions, right? It is so important that we all can accept that people may have a wide range of emotions right now, and those things are normal to have. People can be scared. They can feel really angry. They can feel frozen and numb and not feel anything. These are all common reactions to things that are emotionally overwhelming, that are terrorizing, that are traumatizing even. So I think for as us as caregivers to normalize that, first of all, for ourselves as parents and loved ones, but also for our older kids and younger kids, telling them that it is absolutely okay to be having these feelings, but that we can talk about that with them. And that's what needs to happen next, mm. finding out what they know. You know, what, what have your kids heard, even older kids? What sort of information are they thinking about and talking about with their own school and acknowledging it's really scary right now, but that we can talk about and do some things. Most schools right now are having parent-teacher association meetings, coordinating with their school psychologists right now to have transition plans and meetings that are going on because so many families are worried about this and their kids are worried about this and coming back to school, how to help them feel reassured and safe. And when in doubt should be as much collaboration as possible as parents with teachers and schools to get more information that then we can reassuredly give to our kids about what the plan is and how we're going to transition back and how we can talk about these things in a safe and proactive way. And I suppose the, the constant dropping off, going to school, having a normal day, coming home and saying to children, see, we're, we're going to maintain our regular routine is a good idea, right? Absolutely. Routine and structure is so important here and feeling that worry, but continuing to go forward with that as much as possible is going to be important for most kids. I will say we need to be extra cautious about kids that have been subject to violence or have witnessed violence before or who have had losses recently, maybe a loved one who's died to COVID, maybe some other injury or tragedy because these kids are maybe especially vulnerable to feeling traumatized and overwhelmed. And hopefully they're working with someone who's a specialized counselor or therapist, and if not, probably should be in thinking about a transition and support plan during these times. Sure, I, I just can't help feeling for parents who have elementary school age children who just went through the last two years of the pandemic, either not being at school or being masked in school because there was a fear of a virus which was legitimate and had to be taken care of. Now they're hearing about this. So this may be one of the most stressful times for children in many, many decades. How can parents make sure children are able to cope with all of these really big concepts all at once? Yeah, it's overwhelming, isn't it? I mean, it's hard not to feel like we as parents, how are we supposed to tolerate all this tragedy, all this hardship, 
you know, the shootings in Buffalo and now this and, and countless times we just hear about more and more school shootings. And then to think about all the loss and challenges of the pandemic and how many people, have, I think it, it's upwards of over 200,000 children in our country have lost a caregiver due to COVID in the past two years. It is, it is absolutely overwhelming. And I think we have to focus on the things that we can control when we're both modeling for our kids and we are trying to help them cope as well too. Mm. How are the ways in which we're able to both take some space? How, how can we find some ways to relax with some good coping skills? How can we focus on some things that bring, bring us joy? We really have to think about some of the things we know from tremendous amounts of research and clinical experience as psychologists, psychiatrists, and social workers that help people through all these challenging times. One of them being humor. Mm. I think a lot of people are so scared and frustrated right now. Is it okay to be able to laugh and to enjoy ourselves? Those things are absolutely critical for us as human beings to do in times like this. And we should not feel guilty. We need to tell ourselves and we need to tell our kids, it's okay to be experiencing something good and positive right now. And we need to do that. Mm. Also, do altruism. Altruism is such a helpful, one of the highest of coping mechanisms during times like this. Do people want to go to you know, a fundraiser? To a rally, is there a way we can give back? We can feel together as part of a community and feel like we're helping. Sometimes we can't really feel a whole lot of ways that we can help ourselves, except when we feel like we're helping other people. And that helps other people and us. And it is a really great thing to model and think about to do together with kids. Sure. Can I ask you a very specific question? It, it dawns on me that, especially of route and fourth grade, uh, children have really first um, developed their concept uh, of death. And these are children who do intruder drills at school. And now they are hearing about an event where it came true. So if a child says to a parent, but it happened, what are the words that you should say to reassure a child? Wow. I think that the things that we say to children are trying to figure out a little bit more about what they're thinking and, and try to figure out what their specific worries are. I mean, if they're directly asking you, we do these drills and it happened to someone else, I think we have to be really compassionate and say, we're doing these drills to help make sure that we can be as safe as possible. And we don't want anything like this to happen to you. And again, reminding them that this thing happened far away from them, that it's over right now and that you're safe. Mm. How important and, is it for the schools to have resources for children in terms of these kinds of conversations as well? Critical, critical, critical to do those things. And I think, you know, brings me back to what we were talking about, talking to teachers, talking to guidance counselors and talking to school psychologists. You know, the National Academy of School Psychologists has specific recommendations about, about active shooter drills, about how to address shootings when they happen and really, really critical I think for families to be collaborating with those folks at school to think about what, you know, what is the plan right now? How, how are we going to address this? How are we going to help kids feel safe when they're here in the hospital? There needs to be some reassurances, not just from parents, but when we're thinking about being in schools, this has to be addressed. And just like in the same way we as parents need to talk about this with our kids, you know, it needs to be addressed and talked about in some sort of way that people can agree on within school settings, right? Because kids worries and fears are often, not always, but often worse than reality. And if we're not talking about it, they're left to their own worries and fantasies. And it's so much better to know what kids are thinking and to be able to hear them out and listen to them. Sometimes kids are looking for an answer and looking for a solution. I'm safe right now. Tell me this is okay, mommy. Tell me this is okay, daddy. And sometimes it's just important to be hearing them out, to validate that those things are scary and for them to hear that your teachers and your school and your parents and your family are going to do everything they can to keep them safe. Right. Even if that's not a full promise that they will always be safe and nothing bad will ever happen to them, they hear that earnestness, they hear that care, they hear the parents are paying attention and that parents and schools are thinking about this and are acknowledging these things too is going to provide a, a good bit yeah. of support for kids not going to so solve all these problems these big emotions are still going to be there and we have to be unfortunately patient with ourselves and our kids throughout this process because this is not just going to be here today and tomorrow this is going to be in our minds for a while and has continued to be unfortunately for a long time here in our country mm. children have such delicate minds important for them to feel that these are problems for the adults 
to worry about and be working on and that it's not something they have to feel that they have to deal with. Dr. Chase Samsel, thank you so much for your expertise and your time and joining us today. We appreciate it.